today I have the honor and privilege of sitting down with the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy. Thank you so much for just taking the time to do this. Thank you for having me, Savannah. Of course, of course. So obviously with my parents' situation, I've taken this opportunity to educate myself on really just our laws and the prison system as a whole. And you stuck out to me because of all the different bills that you've enacted, and especially when it comes to prison reform and the things that you've done. Uh, but before we get there, let's just talk a little bit about you and what led you to politics. First of all, it's great being with you. Yes. Uh, welcome to Newark, New Jersey. Thank you. Um, I, I dated back to when I was a little kid. I, I've described our family growing up, I'm the youngest of four, as middle class on a good day. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad did not get out of high school. My mom earned a high school degree and that was it for her. She cared that the four of us got an education. Mm -hmm. He cared that we, uh, that we were tuned in to community service, politics, current events. So I did it as far back as to my dad as a little kid and lots of other heroes and mentors over the years, but that's where it began. You spent 23 years in finance. I did. And you definitely did not come to politics for the money. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is for sure. That is for sure. And so when it comes to the state of New Jersey, let's talk about the different bills that you've enacted when it comes to prison reform in our system and giving people that are in your system a second chance. Yeah, that's a big deal for us. Mm -hmm. So when we got here now almost six years ago, New Jersey had, among other challenges, the widest white, non-white gap of persons incarcerated in America, mm. number one. And number two, we weren't a great state for second chances. Yeah. We didn't let you vote. We didn't let you expunge a low-level marijuana conviction. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't do a lot of things. And we, yeah. were, we were committed to growing the economy, becoming a responsible state again. Yes. And we've become very irresponsible. <laughs> And we were committed to addressing the inequities, not all of which are in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are there. Yes. And we're, we've done a lot, but we're still on a journey. We're not, we're not, uh, we're not where we ultimately will be or want to be, but we've come a long way. Yes, because when you, come, when you sp speak about voting, what a lot of people don't realize is as a convicted felon, you cannot vote. Um, in most states that's and correct. for the president of our country. Yeah. And to me, that's so baffling because you can be the president if you're a convicted felon, but you cannot vote for the president. Yeah. And we, we, we saw that and said, you know what, that's that, that's not on. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're if you're now on probation or parole, uh, you can vote again and, and you deserve that vote. You deserve a say. Uh, in how your community or your county or your state is, is the direction it's headed. For sure. And within the state of New Jersey, you guys have different programs for people who have been through the system to kind of educate them for the outside world. Correct. Because the issue is, is within our prison system, these inmates learn a currency for inside the system. They're not learning a currency for when they get out. Society, correct. And when it comes to reentry, I feel like that's something you guys have done very well and that you continue to work on because we just don't have that. There is not yeah. a lot of that. You, you, you said it and framed it very well. Um, you, you've got too many people who are exiting the system mm -hmm. who just don't have the skills, the supports the mentoring, whatever it is that they need. And we're committed to that. Yeah. And by the way, there's a direct correlation between giving them those tools mm -hmm. and a recidivism rate that is among the lowest in the country. Yes. I wish it were zero, mm -hmm. uh, but we are among the lowest in the nation. And we're, we're at the lowest in our state in at least a decade. Because since you have been in office, that recidivism rate has gone down. It has gone down uh, virtually every year. The pandemic was a challenge, clearly, mm -hmm. in many respects, mm -hmm. uh, including in the criminal justice system. Uh, but we're committed to that. For it's, sure. it's in all of our best interest to have folks who are mm -hmm. coming out of the system, yep. have the skills and supports they need to be full participants in society. And and we're committed to that. Again, I, w I wish it were at zero. I know, right? I wish we were. We had it perfectly figured out. We don't, mm -hmm. but we've come a long way. Yeah. And so there is a New Jersey senator, Cory Booker, who has introduced a package of bills. It's to end the unfair and abusive labor within our prison system. Yep. And have you 
I feel like that is something you're very on par with. Yes. And when it comes to the research, out of the 1.2 million people we have incarcerated, 65% of them are working in our prison system because of the fear of retaliation if they are not working. And they get paid 13 cents an hour. Yep. And what's so sad is you're very outspoken about the racial injustices that have happened. And obviously with the 13th Amendment, we abolish slavery, except for punishment. Yeah. Listen, it's, uh, first of all, I love Cory Booker. Yes. And as usual, he's standing on the right side of an issue, mm -hmm. which uh, in the current state, as you rightfully point out, is grossly unfair. Yeah. Um, and, and so uh, we endorse anything that gets us uh, better treatment. Listen, f folks commit a crime and they're convicted and the, uh, they're convicted based on the facts. Mm -hmm. There's a Th that's the reality. Yeah, we're not asking. Nope. We're, we are here for law and order, but for correct, correct law and order. Correct, correct. And, mm -hmm. I, and Senator Booker has stood on that side, as do we, from day one. Yes, for sure. And something that you've done in the state is there was a women's correctional facility. There still is, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. we've, at long last, uh, we're going to close it. And I think we put 80 or $90 million dollars in the budget I just signed wow. to make sure that happens ASAP. Wow. Uh, and it's got to be, it's the, it's called the Edna Mahan uh, Correction Facility. Okay. Uh, it's outdated. Um, it's not at the level it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And it's only one unit, which means as you frequently have in the criminal justice system, you have to separate uh, folks who are incarcerated into different buildings, yep. different wings, and we don't have that ability. So not only is it not at the level it needs to be in terms of the humane treatment, yes. uh, but we also need a, a facility that has multiple options. Mm -hmm. We are committed to doing that at long last. This has been building for literally decades. Mm -hmm. and we're finally going to get there. Well, I just have to say thank you. My honor. Because having my mother in a facility, I know the downfalls and more people should stand up in this way. Yep. Um, because it's, it truly is heartbreaking to see, but especially too, as a woman, you know, Absolutely. being, being anyone, you know, male or female, but as a woman, it feels amazing to have a man stand up for what is right. God bless you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And again, we're, we're on a journey. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned recidivism rates are going in the right direction. Actual crimes, particularly violent crimes are going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. The population, the prison population in New Jersey is down dramatically, mm -hmm. and yet we're safer as a state. What would you say to the everyday person? Because since I have been speaking on this topic, you have people that say, these people, they did what they did. They should be treated like the animals that they are. That is the number one thing that is told to me. And I just don't know how to reach the yep. public the public when it comes to this issue. So one angle that I think may bear fruit, first, let's put aside humane treatment. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, regardless of what the crime is, there's a standard here. I put that aside for a moment. I think one way to get at this is to make the case that it's in our collective enlightened self-interest as citizens mm -hmm. that we have programs for reentry that work, that lead to lower recidivism. Yes. Uh, in other words, training, education, healthcare, housing, whatever it might be, job opportunities, workforce development. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, uh, that we treat people humanely when they're in the system. That, that, that's not just the right thing for them, but it's the right thing for all of us. We have a mm -hmm. safer society. We have a society with less of us versus them, mm -hmm. less inequity, which is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't buy these arguments that say just because you're doing what you're doing that this is sort of some agenda. Yeah. Uh, that's not what this is. No. This is about keeping all of us safe and secure, mm -hmm. uh, not just some of us. And I think that's the angle that I think could bear fruit. I, again, appeal to the enlightened self-interest of all of us. Yes, without a doubt. And I think with that, I just... It's, it's something I've become very passionate about. Not and you have spoken, you've also spoken out about compassionate release and believing in that. 
And can you give me your viewpoint on that? A he, compassionate release, home confinement, maybe other forms of incarceration. Yeah. So this is somebody that we put in place. This would apply to someone who's uh, near or at the end of their life. Mm -hmm. They've uh, done a substantial amount of their time yeah. that they're deemed to not be a threat to society. Mm -hmm. let's, that, let's let that man or woman uh, get released, go home, yeah. and live out the rest of their lives, which in, sadly in many cases is a short amount of time mm -hmm. in dignity. Yes. Again, that, that folks, some folks hear that and they say, oh my gosh, the reality is the facts don't bear that out. The facts bear out that this is not just the right thing to do for that individual, but it doesn't put the rest of us in any, uh, any not, more harm. Or, chances are they will not reoffend. Overwhelming chances are. And you are know, I have actually seen this firsthand with where my dad is. There's an older gentleman um, who is now suffering from dementia, doesn't know where he's at, doesn't know where, what is happening, you know, and isn't getting the proper care. And in a situation like this, a compassionate release, you know, that weighs totally. on my heart because this man, you know, so I, I look at this and I'm like, we need, this isn't a right or left issue. It is not. This is a humanity issue. It's humanity. And, and again, I think you have to continue to convince people. And the good news, Savannah, is the facts are on our side here. Mm -hmm. So we're not making up the facts. No. These are hard, hard edge, hardcore facts that we're not putting society in at any mm -hmm. higher level of risk. Yep. If anything, we're actually reducing that risk, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's compassionate release or other programs, and we're doing the right thing at the same time. For sure. And you speak about mental health, especially amongst the youth. Um, and I was, I did an interview recently with an attorney and we were speaking about our prison population and how 30, 40 years ago, you saw these mental institutions with just an outrageous amount of people that were there. And then you saw that number going down, but on that same scale, you saw our prison population increasing. You bet. And so that tells me that we are not giving proper mental health treatment to people and instead we use prison as a way to house yeah. these individuals. You, you could not be more right. I just concluded recently my term as chair of the National Governors Association. When you're the chair, you get to raise money around and develop an initiative and mine was strengthening mental health among our youth. Mm -hmm. And we delivered a playbook on exactly how to deal with this uh, for all American governors. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you another example of a program that we've now it's taken statewide. We piloted it and it's now all over New Jersey, which I think is a national model. And it's called Arrive Together. Okay. Uh, and it goes like this. If the dispatcher gets a call, whether it's local police, county or state, and it's a mental health related mm -hmm. call. Uh, the old days, you'd send out a uniformed policeman in a marked car. Mm -hmm. And that would be the first impression that that individual would mm. have. Arrive together uh, is a simple fix, but it's an important one. That member of law enforcement is plain clothes, the car is unmarked, and most importantly, riding shotgun is a mental health, trained mental health professional. The wow. member of law enforcement and the mental health professional show up at the scene together, and they make a collective decision as to who should take the lead. In mm. most cases in our piloting experience, it was the mental health professional. It is a game changer. Now, it's not just a game changer for the long-term well-being of that individual, mm -hmm. whether they go to prison or not. It's also a game changer because sadly, you have a lot of injury and death associated with these calls if you look around the country yeah. uh, under the sort of more traditional model. For sure, because I think when someone is in a crisis such as that and you see a police car, you see a badge, you see a gun, a gun. There is part of you that feels I'm in trouble. You bet. I did something wrong when a lot of these situations are out of someone's control. Correct. And by the way, uh, I'm not pointing fingers. It's happened in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. It happens. Uh, sadly, it's happened frequently when there's some, mm -hmm. some amount of violence, because as you rightfully point out, somebody's already at the edge. Yeah. Y y you're, 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 playing very carefully to not push them over the edge. Mm -hmm. You want to bring them back. For that, sure. That's what we're committed to. And so have you had other governors that are 
hopping on board with this initiative? With this program, not yet, but in fairness mm -hmm. to other governors, it's hot off the press. This is mm -hmm. a, a new uh, initiative, and we, as I mentioned, we piloted it. We wanted to make sure we had it right ourselves. For sure. Uh, and we've just gone uh, statewide as of July 1 of this year. Okay. So stay tuned, because it's, it's something I think that will get national attention, mm -hmm. will have legs, and will have positive implications for other states. And when it comes to mental health amongst our youth, I have spoken very heavily about this because I have struggled myself and I've spoken about it. Our school systems, have you thought of anything to implement when it comes to our school systems and proper mental health treatment? Yeah, we, we have. So uh, on, uh, money is in everything, mm -hmm. but putting a serious amount, putting the right resources in place is uh, at least part of the equation. Yeah. So we've put a lot of money to work in that system. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, we've, we've been in New Jersey very successful historically with the kids, dealing with kids who e expressly exhibit mental health challenges and stress. Mm -hmm. But it's probably only about 2% of the kids in our school system. We have about 1.4 million kids mm. in school. So we're keeping that very uh, focused program in place but we're, uh, right now we're rolling out something else, which is casting a wider net, the children's system of care, it's called. Okay. This is basically putting the net out to, to, to allow us with resources, um, training in our educators and in-school professionals mm -hmm. to touch every kid. Mm. And the reason is it's been triggered by the pandemic. We knew that we knew that mental health challenges existed yeah. before the pandemic, but we now know that they're much more exacer exacerbated since the pandemic. For sure. And that's been the trigger. And, uh, and so we'll keep this very focused program, which has been very successful, but mm -hmm. dealing with a very small minority of our kids while casting a wide net, basically to touch all of our kids, all of our educators, make everybody aware, both as peers, and, and as mentors and supervisors. And, and, and I, I think we're the one, uh, Savannah, the one um, argument I can't take is someone denying that this crisis exists. It, because it very much does. You bet. We, we could differ as to what the, the causes. recipe is, or the yeah. causes, or how we're going to most effectively deal with it. For That's sure. this playbook I mentioned. has got probably 35 different specific ideas in terms of what to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not like all of them. I may not like all of them, but let's let's acknowledge it exists. This crisis, exactly. And then let's figure out what to do about it. For sure, because I think the issue is is a, there is a huge population that can't afford these resources. Correct. I look for myself and my two younger siblings, and I spend thousands of dollars a month for therapists, yep. for psychologists. I am blessed and fortunate enough to be able to do that, yep. but the everyday person may not have those resources. You've got real access issues, how insurance treats physical health mm -hmm. versus mental health. Which it, is, that is a huge, huge issue, issue. Right, the lack of parity. Mm -hmm. You've also got an, uh, another reality. There's, there's an enormous supply demand imbalance. Even if you can afford the therapist, there aren't enough of them. Yeah. Uh, and very few of them take Medicaid. Uh, it's a overwhelmingly, not entirely, but overwhelmingly a cash on the barrel mm -hmm. um, industry in terms it of is. how you pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, those are all realities that we have to figure out a way to, to crack the back of. I, I hope uh, this playbook will help particularly with our kids. I love that. I hope it comes to the state of Tennessee I, well, because I, it is very much needed. I'll make sure you get a copy. Very, of it. Please do. Please do. Because something you said, which when I was doing my research that you said years ago that I loved, you said that our legacy will be measured by how well we set the table for tomorrow, by how deeply today's youth understand. That's Still what I believe with all my heart. In other words, when you're, mm -hmm. when you're in government and public service, you have to deal with the here and now. Mm -hmm. You've got to get a budget passed, which we recently did. Or if you've got a natural disaster, you've got to deal with that. Um, we tragically lost two Newark firefighters mm. a short while ago battling a blaze at our port. So there's the here and now. But I think the, as important, if not even more important, is how are you setting that table Mm -hmm. for the next generation, for your successors in public service, but more importantly for our kids as they grow up to have their own kids and grandkids. What's that going to look like for them? 
If you know me, then you know I absolutely love fashion. It is my go-to, especially on days where I'm just feeling, ugh. I can go to my closet, pick out a great outfit, and just feel a little bit better about myself. That's why I'm so excited for our next sponsor, Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane is a California lifestyle brand that inspires women to live well every day. From wardrobe essentials to all the things that make a house a home, they create effortless staples without sacrificing style or comfort. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this brand. I'm obsessed with Jenny Kane. I actually ordered the cashmere fisherman hoodie in an oatmeal color and well, I just haven't been able to take it off. It is so comfortable, so stylish, and you can be comfortable without sacrificing style. It is totally possible, and Jenny Kane has helped us to get there. So guys, go and visit the website for Jenny Kane, and you will not regret it. Find your forever pieces at Jenny Kane and get 15% off with promo code UNLOCKED at JennyKane.com. J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E dot com promo code unlocked support for today's episode comes from honey love and let me tell you the reviews are in and honey love came out on top for best wedding day shapewear with wedding season upon us this is the ad you've all been waiting for whether you're a bride or a guest like me always or just looking for an everyday fit honey love is your go-to for all things shapewear honey love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear i know when i have another shapewear i literally feel like i cannot breathe there are indentions left on my body it's not fun not pleasant it just makes wearing shapewear terrible and then i switched to honey love and honey love gives me that snap look while also being extremely comfortable. Honey Love's best-selling superpower short is the go-to. It has targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas you need less compression. Their signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. Honey Love is the absolute best. It's the way to go. I will forever stand by that. So I hope that you guys try Honey Love. And I have an exclusive offer just for my listeners. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com backslash unlocked. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash unlocked. You are a very educated man and you are sitting here having a conversation with a 25 year old that is wanting to know better so that I can do better. And I think that's where a lot of politicians go wrong is I'm so easily written off because I'm young and I may not be as educated when in reality change starts with my demographic. It starts with the Gen Z population. And that's how we reach people because times are changing. You betcha. First of all, I give you enormous credit for Thank putting you. yourself up on the high wire without a net uh, <laughs> oh. and going into areas that you admittedly yeah. have not had experience in. But secondly, it's a real stark, um, uh, oh my God moment about who shows up to vote. And this is a mm. message I want to, for everybody out there who's watching us. Yeah. Vote. Elections have consequences, and it's very interesting. People my age vote at a much higher rate than people your age, and yet what's at stake matters a whole lot more for you yes, than it does for me. It does, and that's the biggest thing, As I hear w- way too often, and I just had a conversation with someone the other day, and they were like, oh, yeah, I'm not voting. It's not going to make a difference. Boy, that could not be more wrong. Wh- whether you agree with them or not, uh, I know which camp I'm in. You look at Supreme Court decisions mm-hmm. that you don't agree with, yeah. uh, or maybe you do agree with. The fact of the matter is, it's the starkest reminder I can think of mm-hmm. that elections have consequences. Yeah. Those justices are appointed by the winner of the presidential election. Mm-hmm. Folks need to, I'm desperate for young people. We've done a decent job in Jersey. We're better than the average state in terms of mm-hmm. uh, young, youth voter turnout but not anywhere near where we need to be. And why do you think that is? I think there's a lot of the, uh, uh, in, in your generation, uh, I, I say your generation, I'm making myself sound like a, 
like a, a, a geriatric here. I gotta I check mean. that off. I uh, mean, I think folks don't. It's too abstract for them. Yep. That they don't. Un, there's not a good enough. And maybe that's our fault. Maybe it's society's fault. But too often, voting in elections are abstract. They're diff, They're distant. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think anything we can do to to remind folks of the immediacy and the stakes that are that are that, that are that are involved in an election. Yeah. Whether it's a Supreme Court justice, whether it's uh, minimum wage, criminal justice reform yes. for our conversation, treatment of the mental health challenges, you know, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. folks in seats like mine uh, have a big impact on that. And, yeah. And I, we just got to make sure more more young people get that. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's kind of what I've said is. I had no knowledge of our justice system. I didn't, why should I care? It didn't affect me at that time. And I have said publicly, don't be me. Don't just care about something because it affects you. Care about something because it affects other people too. And I've had to educate myself. And I think that's the issue is my generation. We've done a lot of things right. We've, when it comes to mental health, we have made it not so... You know, it's so much of a stigma we've around it. stigmatized Yes, we have de- not to in- entirely, but to a great yes, degree. Yes, we have helped people to realize it's okay to not be okay. You yeah. don't have to be shameful about it. But one thing we haven't done is what you're saying is showing up to vote you bet. and educating ourselves, getting off of TikTok, Instagram, all of these social media platforms, and truly educating ourselves on what's going on in our world. I love it. Yeah, it's that. That really is a big big thing. And so obviously you are in a place of power. You are the governor of New Jersey. What advice do you have for governors and policymakers that are interested in criminal justice reform, but maybe are too scared to step forward? Yeah. Maybe they are a Republican because maybe yeah. for, for decades, Republicans have not been for criminal justice reform. Yeah. But maybe I think we're in a new era to where we have Republicans who want to stand for it, but maybe just feel like they can't. In fact, you saw some meaningful progress in the Trump administration, Mm -hmm. uh, which is probably something that folks out there aren't expecting me to say. I know, right? But but it's a fact. And I I think this should transcend uh, political party affiliation. Um, And I think it's the... The advice I'd have, and again, I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back. I think we've done a good job. We've done what we said we would do, but we still have a long way to go. I want to make sure I say that. For sure. Um, So, but I think the advice I would give would be the the discussion that you and I had earlier, that convincing other leaders Mm -hmm. at all levels of government that it's in our collective enlightened self-interest to pursue criminal justice reform. It's not just the right thing for those individuals, that young black guy who's not, never been able to get a proper education or a job because he had some low-level marijuana conviction. Yep. Is it good for that guy? You betcha. It's game-changing mm-hmm. to expunge that, to give him a, a, a new lease on life. But the, the, the other point, the sort of more universal point, it's good for everybody. It strengthens your society. And that's the message I would, I would give. I love that. And one thing that you did do is you got rid of mandatory minimums, minimums. correct? Correct. And we so, did. and that is, for people that don't understand that, that is a huge ordeal because that doesn't, you could have been a 18-year-old kid who... Yep. Wrong got place, dealt, wrong time, right? Wrong, wrong place, wrong time. Got dealt a really crappy yep. hand of cards. And that's people don't get how mandatory minimums, how bad they really can be. You bet. And this gives the, the judge in question. We're, we pride ourselves on the strength of our judiciary in New Jersey, mm-hmm. as a lot of states do, and, and we certainly do. But it gives latitude to take into account what the circumstances are. Mm -hmm. Um, It's smart, it's pragmatic, it's the right thing to do. And by the way, maybe uh, the circumstances are really bad and that individual is guilty as charged, but the judge then has the ability to say, okay, well, I'm gonna, gonna, the sentence is gonna be more. Mm -hmm. Uh, But more often than not, 
uh, it gives them a lot, the latitude that I think is appropriate. Mm -hmm. And with you know, it, and folks out there watching this may say, okay, what what's it done to recidivism? Yes. What's it done to crime rates, violent crime rates? And again, the pandemic threw a, a, a monkey wrench into this, as it it's were. It's so hard to get accurate exactly. data. But if you look at the trend lines, we, we're going prison population, recidivism, violent crimes. Again, we're not at zero. I wish we were. Yeah. But the, the progress is in the direction that we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And this has been a contributor to that. Well, I mean, I have done tons of research on different cases to where judges have actually said, I do not want to sentence you to this, but I have no I other choice. I have no choice. Which is so yeah. sad. So thank God we're able to mm -hmm. uh, not have that uh, yeah. as a reality any longer in New For Jersey. For sure. And I mean, in New Jersey, so out of my own curiosity, because I know in the state of Illinois, I mean, you cannot, as a convicted felon, the laws are just insane. I mean, you cannot be an architect. You can't be, um, uh, you can't work at a pet store. You yep. can't be a personal trainer. You, you basically can't do anything. You can't be a roofer. And so how do we get past that? Because how are people to do better yep. if they can't by law do better? And, and there's no one magic wand, mm -hmm. but I think we can wave a number of magic wands at this, uh, a collection of them and get, get into a better place. Make sure that person as they're coming out is prepared as we discussed earlier, yeah. has workforce development. I'll give you a great example. Our director of corrections and my wife are working on uh, getting uh, currently incarcerated individuals trained up in the green economy oh, because we're going to have a huge amount of jobs available in the green economy that these folks will, men and women will come out with real life training, mm -hmm. uh, which is gonna be a game changer for them in particular. But I think it's things like Ban the Box, which we've had uh, mm -hmm. uh, in New Jersey. Uh, during my time, we've banned the box in terms of, when I say ban the box, where you don't have to, uh, this question doesn't get asked, are you uh, convicted of this or that? Yeah. Uh, you couldn't used to be able to not get, rent an apartment uh, we put that behind us. Well, Tennessee is one. Uh, Tennessee is in the top five um, states that are harshest on convicted felons. I mean, you can't be a hairdresser in the state of Tennessee. That's tough stuff. Which is so tough because how are we to give these people a second chance if we limit them from almost every job that they could possibly do? It's just not the right... Yeah. I know folks look at that and they think, well, that's law and order. I, you know, with all due respect, actually, it is like gun safety laws. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get on a soapbox <laughs> on that. But the fact yeah. is, this is a proven. And uh, the fewer guns are on the street, mm -hmm. particularly illegal ones, the less violent crime mm -hmm. you have. And in this case, uh, we, we got to accept the fact that if you give people a, a new lease on life and you do it the right way, that's better for them, but it's better for everybody. I'll give you an example. The best example for us, I think we've had 360,000 marijuana expungements in New mm. Jersey. Uh, that alone has given people, that, that's not just a ban the box, don't yeah. ask the question. Your, your, your record is clean, mm -hmm. um, which has been a game changer. Yeah, for sure. Because right? my thing is, is how are we, and I think it's so hard because every state is different. So marijuana is legal in some states, not legal in other states, but there are states to where it's legal and people are still sitting in prison for marijuana convictions. Yeah, I, I got behind legalizing adult use cannabis here. Okay. Be, solely be, because of social justice. Mm -hmm. uh, is it good for the economy? Will it create jobs? Will it be a, a nice pizzazz factor for folks in your generation? Yeah, that's oh. all, all well and good, yeah. but it's not good enough. It's it necessary, but not sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, and, we, and, and I also felt strongly, and I was joined by some great leadership in our legislature, that whatever the new state of, rea uh, uh, the new state of adult use cannabis going forward mm -hmm. was going to look like, we had to mirror that as we looked back, mm. that we couldn't have what you've just suggested. Yeah. Someone goes to prison on Friday yep. for something that the next Monday morning is legal. Mm -hmm. We can't have that, which well, is why we had to, to have that symmetric yeah, approach. Yeah, ha it has to be retroactive. Yeah. It absolutely has to be. And, you know, I find it interesting because there is some sentencing reform coming down the pipeline in the next few months. And 
even with that sentencing reform, it has to be retroactive. Because mm -hmm. how in today, how are we going to make something okay today, but not make it right for the past? That's the problem. Yeah. And so we said in New Jersey, we can't legalize uh, going forward mm -hmm. unless we have look back provisions mm -hmm. that, that mirror that future. For and we'll sure. be able to do that. And so you do, you have four children, correct? I do. So when you... Including a 25-year-old, I might add. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. He's almost 26, but he's 25 as we sit here. That's amazing. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. You guys know the last seven months have just been a lot. Um, there's been a lot of changes in my life, and it's been hard to find a healthy way to learn how to navigate those changes. I mean, sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. For me, raising these two kiddos, it is the hardest but most rewarding job I will ever have. But I don't always get it right. And whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you to stay connected to what really matters and what you really want out of life so that you can move forward with confidence and excitement. I say that because I do therapy. I am a huge advocate for it. I think it's important for us all to realize it's okay to not be okay. And that's why I absolutely love BetterHelp. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Savannah. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by Viator. For those of you that have not heard of Viator, your life is about to be changed. Viator has over 300,000 bookable travel experiences in over 190 countries. They offer everything from simple tours to extreme adventures and all the interesting stuff in between. Viator is the go-to place to go to book memorable travel experiences. I personally just booked a super fun experience here in Nashville, and it was a game changer. This experience was the Nashville Craft Cocktail and Fine Dining Tour. I absolutely loved it. If you know me, you know I love food. This tour was unbelievable. I mean, from the moment you arrive, you're transported to a world of luxury and sophistication, and you get to indulge in five one-of-a-kind cocktails, and they're each perfectly paired with delectable bites that will leave your taste buds dancing. You start off at the Hermitage Hotel, and then you end at the 21C Museum Hotel, and that hotel was amazing. The artwork is phenomenal, and the drinks, well, absolutely amazing. So I hope that you guys hop on this Viator train with me. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking. One app over 300,000 experiences you'll remember. Do more with Viator. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking. So when you are sitting in your office and you're coming up with these bills, how much of an influence do your children have in that? A oh, big influence. I mean, it depends on the bill, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, Is there a certain bill that they have influenced more than maybe another? Well, they were pretty strong advocates of legalizing adult use cannabis. Uh, I'll leave aside their, their, their potential personal <laughs> motivations, uh, but I think they, they, they felt strongly mm -hmm. in the bigger social justice picture. They saw yeah. that as well uh, pretty clearly. That's, that's one okay. that I would, I would put high on the list. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and they've been, listen, it's a team sport for us. And my wife and I and our four kids, uh, we're in this, it, it, if, if you're one of you in, in you're all in. Oh, you're uh, all, it's a group it, effort. It's a team it sport. is a family no effort. No question about it. Um, and then there was one other thing that obviously I, as a woman, wanted to speak about because it was your bill A3648, uh, where you are drastically reforming the, the civil statute of limitations for survivors of sexual assault. Yeah. 
Um, and it was actually, it was crazy because I was not aware of this. And I was speaking to my mom last night. She called me. And, you know, I got that 15 minutes to talk to her. And yep. she knew I was doing this interview. And she goes, you do know that he came up with this bill that reformed that. And I educated myself, and I think that is the most amazing thing. So can you tell me kind of yeah. what inspired that? First of all, th thank your, uh, your uh, mom for me. Yeah. Um, and your, their, your mom and dad are in my prayers. Thank you. Well, the real inspiration going way back when is my wife was assaulted when she was in college long before I met her. Mm. Uh, so this is live with her. Thank, thank God she's okay. Yeah. But the person who assaulted her uh, was not, justice was not done. Uh, mm. In her case, that was in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So I'd say I'd, I'd, I'd take this back as far as when my now wife first uh, told me about her experience. Yeah. But it's a... It's and a, that, that was kind of your way of that, making her wrong as right as you possibly could. Yeah, I guess could. That's, a fair, that's a good way to put it. I hadn't thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a different state, a yeah. different time. Um, but the fact of the matter is it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it gets back to the sort of broader theme that you and I have been discussing here, and that is addressing inequities. Yeah. A lot of them, maybe most of them are across racial lines, mm -hmm. but there are big gender inequities still uh, sure. with us. I, don't, I need not tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a, a, another piece to that broader yeah. tapestry and you know again we're not perfect yeah it's a it's a step in the right direction and so can you tell me how it broadened the statue of limitations well, it's, from previous how it previously was to now under your administration yeah it's a, you, you've got a lot more time in, uh, to to actually look look at the entirety of the me too experience which i think mm -hmm. has been fascinating mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen some of it right here in new jersey yeah but uh look at folks there's a there's a case unfolding right now in London. And again, I'm not uh, privy to the facts, yeah. but it's striking to me that there, there continue to be, we saw this with the Bill Cosby situation. Mm -hmm. You saw it with other of the Hollywood situations mm -hmm. where a woman will come out many years after the incident and say, you know what? I saw so-and-so come out and tell her story and I, I, I was suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. I was not ever going to tell my story, but I thought, you know what? She's shown that courage. I now need to stand up and stand with her. Yeah. And that's so you've got now, very simply, a longer runway uh, in, in which to, to raise that hand and say, you know what? Th I, this, is, this is wrong. Uh, I was a victim of this. That's amazing. So it's so you, it's it's somewhat in sync with that yeah. notion that it might have taken a long time for you to get there. Yeah. But you have every right still to raise your hand and say, this happened to me. Yeah. More states should jump on board with that. And even, you know, I say from a woman's perspective, but there are men that I know that yes. this has happened to. And, you know, men are just different. Sometimes it does take a little longer to come to terms with it of what happened to come forward. And there's a man that I know that came forward about it as an adult it happened to him as a child, but came forward as an adult. And because he came forward, over 30 to 50 other men came forward as well. Wow. With the same perpetrator? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And that, this yep. bill speaks to just that. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. We speak about this far more in terms of mm -hmm. women who are victims, which, yeah. we, we, which we should. Yeah. But we have to remember that... Uh, this, that men are as well. Everybody's... At, yeah. Uh, in this. That's amazing. Well, I just have to thank you because you are really paving the way. And two, Appreciate I that. will say, you know, I grew up in the South. So very right wing area that I grew up in. But I am learning the older I get that it's not right. It's not left. That, like I said, it's a humanity issue. Yeah. And you can, I think where we go wrong, especially with my generation, if you don't believe what I believe, I'm removing myself. Yeah. And I think that's where we go wrong. We can't let that happen. Mm -hmm. there, you have to sit and have a conversation and learn new things and challenge yourself. I'll give you a, a, a commercial for not for me, but for a friend of mine. Yeah. I mentioned I just recently gave up as chair of the, uh, mm -hmm. finished my term as chair of the National Governor Association. National Governor Association is a bipartisan group. So it mm -hmm. goes Democrat, 
Democratic leader to Republican leader. So my successor is Republican Governor Spencer Cox of Utah. Wow. He and his wife, Abby, are dear friends, and he's a great, they're great people. His, and I mentioned my initiative was strengthening mental health yep. among youth. You know what his is? Let's disagree better. I love that. Isn't that great? That Let, is amazing. Let's, let's disagree, disagree better. better. That is amazing. You, you may not agree with me, and I may not agree with you, but let's yeah. figure out a civil way to talk this through. Exactly. Is that great? I love that. So before we wrap up, what's one piece of advice you could give to my generation? People, you know, people who can vote that maybe aren't voting, that on how to educate themselves a little better. Vote. Mm -hmm. Vote, vote, vote. We've got a New Jersey is uh, got a course now on civic, basically civics. Uh, okay. And I think this whole notion of let's let's get into a room together. Yep. Let's let's not prejudge our, uh, ourselves or the other individuals who we're dealing with. Listen more. Listen better. Mm -hmm. I like this notion of disagree better. Yes. But get in the game. There's yes. too much at stake. Again, for folks in my, I'm, I'm 66 this summer. I, I, I hope I've got many more runs around the track. Yeah. But I know somebody in your generation has probably got, with science and healthcare going the way it's going, mm -hmm. you probably have 80 to 100 years in front of you. Yeah. Uh, so an election next year for president is going to have a lot, very simple math, a lot more of throw weight in your life than it will in my life. Yes. So get engaged, not to you, I mean to your generation. Get yes. engaged, be willing to listen to people, uh, understand the issues just like you're doing. Listen to understand, Listen not to respond. understand and vote. I love that. Well, thank you for taking the time out of your day, and it was such an honor and pleasure. Likewise, Savannah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course.